We're going to be talking about the appointment maker blueprint, how to move people from prospects to appointment on autopilot. Now, there's a neat little story about this one that is pretty, uh, I th just, I think it adds to the credibility of the whole situation here, which is uh, Trent and I had a salesperson uh, after the salesperson had been working for us for a few months, he admitted that the only reason he came to work for us was he wanted to partner with us on, um, you know, another business. And uh, we, we did partner on that business. And this blueprint I'm going to share with you guys today was really created out of that business. Um, he had been doing about 2000 a month in it, obviously not working full time or anything like that. But within three months, we had it doing 60,000 a month. Wow. So that's kind of exciting, right? Super exciting. Um, we were running Facebook lead ads. I'll show you guys the flow in just a second. But Facebook lead ads to, you know, uh, a little video, then to an appointment, you know, setting software. And then from there, you know, we had uh, all, the, all the sales were done by appointment. And so people would show up, they'd have a little 15 minute call and, you know, not everybody closed, you know, and decided to become a customer right at that time, but most, most were able to, because it was a fairly simple process in terms of the whole business model. And, you know, it was like a thousand dollar investment. So it kind of gives you some ideas on, on things. It cost us about uh, 200 per sale, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it, I'm sure there's things that we could have improved over the life of the business. We generated 120,000 leads through Facebook lead ads. And so it was interesting. We learned a lot of data. We've shared some of that with you guys in these past trainings, but we'll get more into it. But I just tell you that story to let you know that this isn't just a, an idea that I'm like, oh, how can we sell texting? <laughs> Let's talk about appointments. This is actually something that we put to the test in a separate business, it ended up getting to about a million a year. Um, then the partner, you know, people freak out when they have success and so sometimes they go sideways on you. And that happened with that guy. Um, I want to start with just the statement that appointment is a scheduled event. We would probably all agree with that. Do you have any problem with that? No, I, I'm, I'm wondering why we even have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it the reason I'm saying it is because I want to kind of build on top of the foundation that we set a couple of weeks ago. And okay. that is that a live webinar is also a scheduled event. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring up these two and put them next to each other is because when you understand the fundamentals of, of a thing, even though we may call it different, you know, by different names, then a lot of the same things that we had as concerns and also things that we discovered as solutions can come into play. So if, if you can switch the vocabulary on webinar to appointment, a lot of the things that we talked about in appointments becomes relevant to or in webinars comes relevant to appointments. So when we talked about common complaints and concerns when it came to webinars, we talked about three things, registration rate, how can I get more people to register? We can translate that, right? How can I get more people to set appointments, appointment setting rate, show up rate, how can I get more people to attend? Because that's still a problem with appointments, just because somebody said, hey, um, I'd like to meet with you, it doesn't mean necessarily that they're gonna show up. And it's even more urgent in appointments than it is in webinar, because in webinar, we're in a, a one-to-many situation, right? So we're we're presenting once, and then multiple people are, you know, hearing the the presentation and having a chance to react to the call to action. And in appointment, we don't get that leverage. It's one-to-one, -one. and so because of that, the time is even more valuable than in a webinar. In a webinar, if one person doesn't show up, yeah, it does affect us, but that hour can still be useful for those that actually show up. But in an appointment, if somebody doesn't show up, that hour is burnt or that time period that we allotted for the appointment is burnt. And so basically that inventory, that, that's inventory for you if you sell by appointment and that inventory expires, it's worse than a restaurant because restaurant at least get a couple of days out of the food uh, and before your inventory goes bad. But when it comes to selling by appointment, that time, you know, if they're late, they don't show up, that really hurts us because we can never get that back. And that person may be able to go do other things that would be selling during that time, but they're not doing the thing that they're intended to do, which is converting prospects into customers. So that really hurts us. So show up rates even more valuable when it comes to appointments. 
And then closing rate, you know, how can I get more people to buy? So how effective am I at getting the person that actually shows up to the appointment to make a buying decision? And I don't know about you, Tyler, but frequently what I see is people will start to look at these things in silos. They look at it as, okay, how do I get people to set the appointment? And then, okay, now that they set the appointment, how do I get them to show up? And then, okay, they showed up, how do I get them to buy? And sometimes they fail to look at the interconnectivity of all the things. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But these same fundamental problems that we brought up with webinars are the same problems that we have when it comes to appointments. Do you see any point, uh, problems that we maybe didn't address? No, I, I appreciate what you're saying though about just kind of connecting everything. Cause you're right. People tend to look at everything in steps um, or they look at the first step because that's what's most urgent for them and they forget the rest. And I think this is why you're, you're always saying, you know, don't do any lead capture unless you know how you're going to sell people. Right. It's like yeah. the whole process is connected and you got to know the end game first and then you back into it. And I think that's what you're trying to say here is connecting. Everything is really important for everybody. And, you know, if that's obvious to you, then that's great. You know, if you're listening and you're watching here and you're like, well, yeah, of course, that's great. I, I want that to be the case. But for those folks that haven't considered it, I really want to make sure that they understand. You've got to look at this the whole thing holistically. We'll probably hit that nail on the head a few times today. So why do people set an appointment? We talked about this kind of before with the, the webinar, and you'll find the answer is very similar, right? They believe you have a solution to their problem. Nobody's going to set an appointment if, you, if they don't believe either that or that you can help them realize their dream. And those are just very generic terms. We can get more specific for your business. But you know, nobody's going to set an appointment to spend their valuable time, right? Time that's expiring for them just like it is for you, not knowing how long they're going to be on the planet. They're not going to waste that time unless they have some inkling that you can actually help them with the problem, right? And so that's a really critical understanding. You have to understand why do people set appointments? Because they believe that you can do something for them. So the underlying requirement that we have with this whole thing is that your marketing pushes for an appointment. The marketing that does push for the appointment must create hope that you have the answer. So that's kind of a, a given. And it, that's what, or assumption that we're saying. You have to get to that point. We're not going to talk about that per se, because I want to leave that open because there's a lot of different ways that you can get people to, you know, start that process, you know, in a sense, and we're going to talk about some, but that marketing that drives people even to that, that idea of they would want to set an appointment is really critical. And we have to make sure that we've, we've built enough hope in there that you actually have an answer, whatever that is, whether it's a text ad or video ad or a YouTube video or whatever the case may be, a webinar, whatever the thing is that you're doing to enter people into this process that prep them for even wanting to set the appointment. Why don't people show up? Interestingly enough, if you, if you were here two weeks ago, you'll recognize all these. Do they forget? Are they busy? I, I, I think those are two of the more common ones, but that doesn't get to the actual root cause. And I brought this up before, if you've ever missed a movie or told the loved one that you would, you've never missed a movie probably that you told a loved one you would attend with them, right? Like, hey, let's go to the movies. Yeah, I guess. It, it would have to be a big deal to probably stop you from keeping that commitment. I just use movies just because that's something we do a lot, but not lately. <laughs> so why do people forget about stuff? Why do people get busy? And the reason why they do it is because it's not important to them. But the reason that you show up and you do that thing that you commit to do is because it's important to you. So we're going to talk about how do we make things important to you when it comes to the appointment realm, but you'll find a lot of the, those answers and solutions are very similar to what we discovered with the webinar. Because again, a webinar is a scheduled event, just like an appointment is. And why do people not buy? Is it because they're not interested? Well, if they show up to an appointment, they're, it's probably that they weren't, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with they're not interested. Maybe that at the end of the appointment, you're not very compelling. <laughs> Has that ever happened, Tyler? Have you ever had an appointment with somebody at the end of it? You're like, yeah, not interested. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't because you weren't interested at the beginning though, right? No, you had, you had the hope, like you were talking about, you had the hope that they could, they could solve your problem, but then you get on and you're like, yeah, underwhelming. See ya. Yeah. So there, it could be that you just, you just bombed, you know, you, you didn't actually, you hinted that you were going to be able to solve the problem, but then when it came, push came to shove, you just didn't deliver. Right. 
It could be they have a question or concern about your call to action. You know, hey, I, I want you to buy and the price is X. And they're going, hmm, I don't know about that price. Um, you know, there could be something like that. Or maybe there's a logistical question they have in their mind. Those are reasons people don't buy. Um, maybe they don't feel comfortable enough with you. I think you brought that up, you know, when we talked about webinars. They're not, they don't quite trust you that you can get the job done. So all these could be po possible reasons they don't buy. Uh, one of the more common ones, however, I find is that people are not prepared to make the buying decision. Would you agree with that one, Tyler? Do you mean like they're not the decision maker or they're just not in a place where they're actually ready to decide at this point? Yeah, they're not ready to decide. They haven't had enough information, right? Yeah, you, may have, you might have sprung a bunch on in the appointment, but they really can't process it. They haven't had thinking time, right? And then maybe there's a lack of connecting of the dots. Well, I see this a lot with, with business owners, small business uh, entrepreneurs and stuff like that, is that they're really clear on how their solution solves the problem that the person has. And they're really clear on what kind of great results they can produce, but they haven't really connected the dots. They almost, because it's so obvious to them, they've left it unconnected, you know, because in their mind, it is obvious. And I think that, if we really investigate what we'll find is most of the time because of these things, because we haven't prepared them properly with information, time to process some things and connecting the dots that really that's the bigger concern. That's why a lot of when presentations fail and sales opportunities fail, it's more because of that and less because the person doesn't know how to sell. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think what happens in this scenario is a lot of people turn towards closing techniques Okay, I'm going to get some hardcore closing techniques in here, and then then I'm going to be able to sell. And so we focus more on that instead of the fundamentals, which is our whole structure for getting to the appointment may not have been preparing them to make a buying decision. So we're going to talk about all three of these questions. We're going to talk about all these kind of, what are these things that we can do that make it so that our appointments actually convert to customers, if that's the whole point of them, which usually it is. And... We can do it at a higher level of uh, consistency and outcome. So we, those are all things I think all of us want when it comes to appointments. So the basic flow, I mentioned it before when I talked about that example that uh, of that business that one of our sales guys partnered with us to do, where we took and we used for our lead capture, we used Facebook lead ads. So in our lead ad, we had enough copy that we could interest them in learning more about the next step. We didn't uh, necessarily push them through the assessment right off the bat. And you'll see when we talk about the assessment that we actually are gonna do more than just throw them at an assessment. We're gonna use some video on the front and the back of it. But the assessment is the core of it. And then we're gonna go to the invitation to set an appointment. And you'll see why it's not just lead capture to set an appointment. It's really important, not because you can't get appointments set if you don't do this assessment step, but because we're not worried about getting appointments set. What are we really worried about, Tyler? Well, we want the deal. Yeah, we want new customers to come out of this. We want new revenue to come. We want new relationships that are going to grow the business to come out of this. The appointment is just an end or means to the end. It is not the end. And this is where a lot of people get confused. So they're like, ah, cut out everything to get as quickly as possible to the, the appointment. But if the appointment isn't prepared properly, that doesn't work. And so we're going to talk about how that assessment comes into it. Then from the, once the appointment is set, again, just like we learned with the webinar, that's not the end of that process. We've got to make sure that they remember to show up. we are talk about reminders and some different ways that we could go about that to make it more effective for us. And then ultimately we get to the appointment. Now, this, this process of flow, what I would rather that you thought of is not just that this is, this is a fixed thing, you've got to do exactly like this, otherwise it's not going to work, but rather that this is a, a sample of a flow that we're going to start building all the principles around so that you can understand the principles that guide why this is a powerful flow. But then you can now tweak this to your situation. So Devin's on today and Devin asked after we did the webinar one for me to do a call with him and one of his clients. So we did a call with him and one of his clients. And then as we went through that, 
using this flow right here would not was not just it wasn't the perfect match. So we were we actually cultivated a, or came up with a, a variation on this, but it used all the same principles. And so that's what I'm hoping you guys would get out of this next few minutes as we go through this is not just, well, this is the flow and I've got to match the flow. You may, the flow may be a perfect fit for your business. But what I hope more that you'll get is the principles around e the reason why behind, behind each of these steps so that that can help you to know how to tweak it to your actual situation. So the only big deal with lead capture, and I'm not going to hit a whole lot of time on this. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways that we could do lead capture. But um, whatever that lead capture mechanism is, the most important thing is we've got to gain permission to text the lead. Because the whole process that you're going to do, whether it's this exact flow or a variation on it, is going to hinge on this permission to text. And we talked about that in the last um, conversation last week is how can we gain that permission? What are some options on that? So I won't spend very much time on that, but I want you to know that is the most important thing out of this. When we did the lead ads in that example, I told you guys about where we took this company that was doing about 2000 a month to 60,000 a month in three months. The thing was that that's the very center of it is we had to have permission to text them. Otherwise the whole thing wouldn't work. And that's where really the need for me to call out marketing rule number 19 came from. So this is just a little homage because the reason that's 19 and not number one <laughs> is because I used to watch the show with my wife all the time. Do you guys know what, do you know what this show is, Tyler? Uh, I think this is CSI. Yeah, NCIS. NCIS. They're, they're the same family. <laughs> um, yeah, so this he's always talking about these rules or they're always talking about the rules that uh, the guy in charge has. And so right here is a little homage to that. And you already brought this up, so you've kind of already set the table for this. But you've got to know how to sell before you decide how to lead capture. And this was one of the problems that the guy had. This is why he was selling at 2000 before us and then 60000 a month and then eventually 83000 84000 was because he didn't understand this concept. Once we got in there and helped him adjust things, he got things straightened out so that he could actually do it. And so we were using lead ads in the lead ad, we would ask specifically, is it okay for us to text you the information immediately? And so it was a variation on that, on that question, but a yes, no. And we got, you know, 77, 75% of the 120,000 leads to tell us, yeah, it's fine. Text me. So Ryan, can I ask yeah. a question about that? Yeah. In your lead ad, are you capturing the phone number in the lead ad form right there? Yes. Yeah. And then on the basically like the thank you page of the lead ad, that's where you're saying, hey, are you okay if we, if we text you? Or are you doing no. that? So it's actually in the form. So when you build a lead ad form, you're, what we would suggest you always ask for is name, mm -hmm. email, phone number, and then you can do a custom question. They let you do like five or six last yeah. I checked. And so we just did one. And that one you know, custom question was, would you like us to text you the information immediately via text? And that's like a checkbox? It's a yes, no drop down. Yes, no. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, we did that. So it was very explicit. You know, they couldn't mess up and accidentally say no or yes. If they did it, it was clear that they were saying, yes, you can go ahead and text me. Well, that was really important because without that, then we wouldn't text people because we wanted to make sure we respected the relationship. Um, so that kind of built into us the necessity to make sure that our ad created kind of a sense of urgency and excitement so that they would say, yeah, immediately send it to me. Plus, anybody that's ever asked for anything on the internet knows that sometimes you just don't get it in the email. It gets lost, it goes to spam, it doesn't show up. And so, you know, the texting kind of adds to that element. So that's what we always do on all of our lead ads is at least those four uh, questions. And if you don't know a lot about Facebook lead ads, the, the beautiful part about them is people don't have to text anything in. And Facebook keeps that. And the phone numbers we found to be 99.7% legitimate phone numbers. And it was 97% of them mobile phone numbers. So that's pretty awesome. Okay. So with the assessment, the, the big deal about the assessment is what we're going to do is we're going to do um, a series of questions. And the real, the real point of these questions is to create this, um, the sense of preparation to be taught and directed 
by the prospect. And that does not happen. Uh, the sense of hope that we're, we're building that, that does not happen unless we apply this rule. Have you, have you ever, can you finish this uh, phrase here, Tyler? Seek first to understand that one? Yeah. Hmm, I guess I'm not sure what you're driving at here. Okay, but... seven habits of highly effective people. Mm -hmm. One of those habits by Steve Covey was seek first to understand, then to be understood. Yeah. So this is a, a fundamental of human interpersonal relationships is that all of us want to, want to be understood, but few of us want to take the time to understand first. The first and fundamental point of the assessment is it creates a sense of, I want to understand what your situation is before we talk. And so this assessment, whether you do anything with the information, just the fact that you're asking the questions creates a sense inside of the prospect that you are trying to understand their situation first. So that is the real important per principle of the assessment is creating that sense of, oh, I understand where you're coming from. And also creating in them, because you ask the questions, if you right, ask the right questions, it also increase that sense of hope that, hey, this guy actually might be able to help me or this gal may actually be able to help me. So we got to have that in there in order for us to be able to really create the sense of importance. You'll remember if you, you will go back to your thoughts about the webinar training that we did, we said we needed to convert a uh, registration into a commitment. And here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be asking them to set an appointment. And before we even ask them to set the appointment, what we're trying to do is get them mentally into a place where they're gonna be making this a commitment, not just uh, an appointment that they set, but they're really committed to it in their heart. And if we can get that, then everything else is going to hinge on top of that. So that's why this assessment is really important. And as far as a technical aspect, I like it to be all multiple choice. And the reason I want to do multiple choice is because they're going to be coming at this assessment from a text message. There's going to be a link in a text message. You can also do a link from an email if they don't give you permission to text them. But if they give you permission to text them, which we're really going to go for, we're going to be texting them at that assessment. That way they get it instantly and there's not a bunch of filters and all that other stuff to keep getting away. And because of that, you know, if you've seen my thumbs, they're terrible. They're huge compared to that little keyboard on the phone. And so while I can type okay, I'd rather not. And that's true for your prospects as well. They'd much rather just tap a button than have to type in things. And so we're going to go multiple choice on this assessment. Um, I like to have the assessment be four to six questions. And at the end of this training, just because um, I wanted you to have uh, the recording Im immediately for you to go through and be able to stop and rewind and not have to wait until I put out the recordings. At the end of the training today, I'm going to give you a way to get the link to um, a how to flow. And I'm going to talk more about how I build out the assessment and how I go through all the questions. But just know you want four to six questions. There's three categories. The first one I want to have that question be is a separator. It puts people into different buckets. So I can now tailor my marketing conversation to better match that if, um, if I do it right. The second one is gather a little bit of information that helps me to better understand their situation. And the third type I call thought provoking questions, which is those questions that are meant to get the person to be thinking about things a little bit differently. Um, after the conversation I had with Devin and his client, you know, I realized, oh, I really look at those questions as being frequently as mindset type questions, questions that help ex express a person's mindset. And when, in all these questions, we're not trying to manipulate them into giving us certain answers. We're trying to discover, but as we're trying to discover, we're also trying to influence thought topics that they might be thinking about so we can activate something called the reticular activator. Now, if you haven't heard of the reticular activator, it's a part of your psyche that once it gets tuned into something, starts finding it and looking for it everywhere. So this is something that you've, you've experienced probably if you've ever bought a new car or bought a car, you get interested in that particular car, and then suddenly you see that car everywhere. That's the reticular activator in your brain turning your awareness onto it. Those cars were always there, by, by the way. They're always there before that. But until the reticular activator got turned on, you were just deleting that information mentally. So you would see it, but you wouldn't notice it. And when the reticular activator gets activated, now you see it and you notice it. And so it almost seems like they're everywhere. 
And we want to do the same thing with our questions. We want to ask a question that, and that's in the thought provoking category that is going to help us to recognize or help them to recognize these concepts that we want them to be paying attention to as preparation for them showing up to the appointment. Um, on the assessment, I like to do an intro video because if we're going to, we do a lead caption, we send somebody somewhere, we want to deliver a little bit of information, prepare them for why are we asking them to take the assessment? How's that going to help them? This gives us a little opportunity to resell the, the value of having an appointment with us. <clears throat> so I'd like to do a little <clears throat> intro video before the assessment for that purpose. After the assessment, I like to have what to do now as a video. And these are short videos. They usually aren't very long. If you're going to have a longer one, I would do the, the, the intro video. And But then again, we're trying to keep it under five minutes. We're expecting that most of the selling has got to be done before lead capture. We're just reinforcing points and then letting them know why they wanted to go through the assessment and how it's going to help you to better understand their situation and better help them to get to whatever it is that you do to help people. The what do you do now video is once they finish the assessment, we want to tell them, okay, hey, great. You took the assessment. That's going to help me to help you as we get in and we have our appointment. Next, click the link below this video and go ahead and choose a time and a date when we can meet together. Okay, so that's what the what to do now video is. Again, that you heard how quick that went. That's maybe a minute, two minutes max if you're getting wordy, but even then try and contain that down because all we're really doing is saying, okay, this is where you are, this is where you want to go, and this is why what you just did was so important. Again, we're, if we understand this concept of seek first to understand, then to be understood, we're going to be utilizing that in our language during those videos. Now, the other important part about the assessment is data integrity as we link to the appointment. We want to make sure that um, through this whole process of sending them the text or the email to the assessment, from the assessment to the setting of the appointment, we're passing a contact ID. Because, Tyler, have you ever run into a situation where you are not, where somebody's not passing a contact ID and they're relying upon the person to enter their information multiple times through the process? Yeah, whenever you do that, it's a recipe for disaster because they'll either use different email addresses or they'll type it wrong or something like that and you end up with duplicates and everything's all messed up. Yeah, what happens if they give you two different email addresses to your automation flow? You got two different contacts and the one that started, you know, the, the automation doesn't get stopped when it should have gotten stopped. So they get continued follow up in the wrong direction. And then the new contact is totally separate from everything else. It's all messed up. Yeah. So if you're new to the marketing automation and you haven't made those mistakes yet, you may not realize how critical it is. But because I'm talking about new flow, I want you to know this is really important that you keep that tight. So if you're using Fix Your Funnel, this is a no brainer because Fix Your Funnel, you're going to use a trackable link to the assessment. When you create a, an assessment, we call it a mobile survey. You create a mobile survey and Fix Your Funnel we generate automatically a trackable link for you. So then when you go create that message, and I'll show you in the how-to video I'm gonna give you, I'll do this whole process. But when I go create that campaign builder message I wanna send out, um, I'm gonna put that, that trackable link in there. And that trackable link is gonna contain the contact ID and it's gonna pass that over to the, the assessment or the survey. After the assessment, if you use one of our, like we, we recommend Appointment Core, um, there are a few other integrated ones. You just have to make sure that they're looking for contact ID in the way that we, we present it. Well, if you use Appointment Core, we automatically will connect that link to the contact ID. So we look, you just pop the link in there. We look for that link and we append the contact ID. So you don't have to do any technical stuff to get that to happen. You just pop in your appointment link. We'll append the contact ID you know, when they get to the end of the assessment and then boom, they go right into setting the appointment. It's not asking them for information. We've kept the contact ID chain through the whole process. Okay. So now once they've set the appointment, um, we, well, I guess we got to get to there, right? So the real reason we want to use uh, one of these systems, there's a lot of systems out there. Tyler, how many have you used? Five, six? Oh, I don't know. I try and keep it to a minimum. <laughs> but you've you experimented with quite a few. Yeah, we've, we've played with uh, Calendly, Schedule Once, Appointment Core. Those are the main ones. We, we use Appointment Core internally. We support the other ones with our clients. Yeah. I only recommend Appointment Core for a couple of reasons. One is they we got a real deep integration with them, so they're able to utilize your 
fix your funnel number for sending appointment reminders and stuff, which is really important because if someone replies to that, uh, you know, appointment reminder with anything other than, yeah, I'm showing up and you wouldn't even know that if you don't use the fixture funnel number, you don't get any of that information back. But if you use your fixture funnel number, um, you're getting that information back to you so that you can now deal with anything that changes or questions that come up for people. And we don't have frustrating moments for the client as well as yourself. Okay, so I wanna avoid the duplicate data entry. We already covered that extensively. I wanna make sure it's integrated deeply with the market automation and appointment core really does that for us nicely. So that's why we use it as well. Um, okay, so I've got those two points, but now I want to enforce a minimum of a 24 hour buffer. Um, what's your, what's your view on that, Tyler? I'm curious to hear. Um, yeah, I, obviously, I, you know, I'll give you mine, but I do the same thing, 24 hour buffer, because I've had situations where I'm in a meeting or, you know, I'm just heads down on work. I'm not looking at my calendar and someone books on my calendar for that day and I miss it. Right. So yeah. I need that 24 hour buffer. So, yeah, just from a logistics standpoint, it's really important to do. We're going to talk about some more reasons why you might want to have a buffer that may even exceed 24 hours if you're going into a sales appointment. Um, but at least the 24 hour buffer is my view as well. Um, one, for the purpose that you just stated, it allows you to actually schedule your time intelligently with some sort of you know, autonomy. But there's another reason we'll get into when we talk about reminders. Um, when it comes to this calendar, you got to think mobile first because this whole experience is a mobile experience. So even if the person frequently is a desktop user or you know laptop user, like a lot of people that are Infusionsoft customers are, are using their laptop or their computer all day long. Very few of them are actually on their, their mobile as their primary. But when this whole process, we're keeping it mobile the whole time. So you got to just make sure with that appointment software that it's mobile first. And I think they all are now, so this isn't really a consideration, but it's something I just want to be explicit on because if it's not a good mobile experience, then it kind of can disrupt the whole thing. We want that to be a pretty smooth process. Okay. So now we're, we've got the appointment set. It, the, here's the word. A lot of people miss out on a huge opportunity. They think that the point of the, the, the buffer is just for the scheduling you know, to make sure my schedule is clear for me. But there's also another point in the buffer. And the buffer gives us an opportunity to prepare the person for the appointment. See, the assessment does that initial preparation. We're, we're doing some psychological stuff in the sense that we're trying to open up their mind to the, these concepts and ideas that are really important. Um, that's what we're doing with our thought provoking questions. You know, that's what we're, we're trying to elicit in that whole situation with the assessment. And by the way, if you, you didn't see the one on the webinar, go back and watch that because you'll pull a ton of nuances we gave you in that that will apply in this. So do that. Don't miss out on it. But in this, in this, diff, this time between when they actually choose the appointment and when the appointment is, we have a, a big opportunity and an obligation. And so what I do is I usually look at the customer value in these situations when I'm working with companies and the higher the customer value, then the, then the more I'm going to want to use different mediums. Okay. So if a customer value is relatively low, I'll just stick with some text and that's it. But as the value of a customer goes higher, I want to use mediums that match that value. And so if I was going to be selling something that was, let's say a thousand plus, um, I'm going to want to be thinking about how do I get a direct mail package in their hands? And I can do this through automated processes. We use something called rocket notes. Do you use anything for direct mail or to mail books and stuff like that? No, we don't currently. Um, but we've used uh, systems in the past. Um, truthfully, I had a relationship with our local UPS store where they would, uh, they would store inventory for free. And it would oh, just, cool. just automate the email from Infusionsoft over to their office to tell them, Hey, ship one of those. Okay, great. Yeah, any and there's a ton of different systems. I just use Rocket Notes for sending like uh, brownies to welcome new customers, and you know some other direct mail stuff that we do. Um, but they'll also store and, and ship books for you, or something like that, or a package if you put together a package. So I like to use something like that. If the customer value is high, I want to make sure there. I think this is a Dan Kennedyism, but it's um, don't talk to anybody until they know you're somebody. Have you ever heard that or a variation on that? Yeah, I have heard that. 
Yeah, so this positioning is really critical for the appointment. And we don't want to go into an appointment with this person thinking we're just like anybody else that they could have talked to. Um, we want to make sure that we've positioned ourselves properly. And so this reminder time really is critical. And that's why my buffer is going to actually match my needed preparation. So if I'm trying to send direct mail, then my buffer is going to match the amount of time I need to reliably, you know, at the longest, get that mail delivered to them. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, and a lot of people overlook this. And then you have appointments that don't close at the ratio that you would hope for. And if you think about this stuff, you can create some amazing situations that don't require any effort on your part. Like this whole flow, you can set up. You, you talk to the Rocket Notes, you get them, you know, ship them a box of your books. If you don't have books, I've got a podcast episode where I'll teach you how to write a book. And, you know, seven days if you want to. But we want something that positions us really well and we want to send that to them. A little antidote on this is, uh, I don't know if I said that right, but we'll roll, roll with it. Uh, my brother Trent, who was my partner in Fix Your Funnel, he was a real estate agent before. And um, when we had a training company that was working with real estate agents, he was the, he was the expert for this training company. And we had 40,000 real estate agents that we had trained and if Trent started talking about the topic, which was short sales, uh, people would listen. They would get on that call and they would pay money to be there. But when Trent was talking with his own clients, they were listening to the hairdresser. They were listening to the guy that's checking them out at the grocery store. They were listening to everybody else except for him. And so we're like, what is going on, Trent? And after we did a little evaluation, what we determined was they just didn't know who he was. He wasn't positioned properly. And so uh, we started sending out as part of this process, pre-appointment, a copy of his book that we had written together. And when we sent that book out, suddenly everything changed. When he showed up to the appointment, there was a totally different discussion than when he wasn't sending out that, that positioning element. So I would really strongly encourage you that if you're, the value of your appointments is worth very much, and you have to know what your customer value is to be able to make this evaluation that you use more mediums than just the text message. Now there's nothing wrong with just using a text message in my text message reminders. If I give myself enough time, I'll probably send some sort of video content that would prepare them for the appointment. So when it came to my brother's appointments that he had with for short sales, they had to have certain documents ready. For your appointment, there may be certain things they need to do before they show up in order for them to make a buying decision. See, I got to, your job and my job is to make sure that the prospect is prepared to, to make the buying decision. We can't just leave it to chance. If we leave it to chance, we're not going to get very good results. And so in order to, to make sure that they're prepared, we may need to send them a text that says, with a little link to video, here's, watch this video before you show up to the appointment because it will tell you some critical things you've got to do. Okay, and that link to that video, we're going to go through, here are the things that, that you have to do before you show up, or here's some things you should know before we talk. You know, I don't know what your specific appointment situation is. I don't know what you're selling or anything like that, so I can't get more specific. But the long and short of it is you need to think through this whole process of what is it that the person needs to know, believe, feel in order for them to make the best buying decision? Is there a, like a little checklist that they need to go through? Or there's some, is there some sort of a document worksheet that they need to go through? Is there a video that they need to watch where you talk about the five common myths and misconceptions about the topic of your appointment? Is there some sort of content that we can deliver? And the text is going to be the most powerful way to do this. Uh, with that sales company that uh, I mentioned before, where we took it from, you know, doing 2000 a month to 60,000 a month in three months, one of the big things that we did is we inserted these pre-appointment videos into it. And so we would, depending on how long they set out the appointment, we would drop a couple of videos at them that would let them get excited about, but also prepare for the appointment. And so make sure you're doing the same thing, but match you know, the value of the customer with the right mediums. Use text and other things. You know, maybe you have a voicemail that you send out that you know, says, hey, we're looking forward to your appointment tomorrow. Really excited to talk to you. Please make sure that you've watched that video I texted you earlier. So we can use the automated voicemail to be able to send that. And that can help you know, get the person, make sure they're really prepared. Because again, this appointment time is expiring. 
It is, if they don't show up or if they show up unprepared, we just wasted an hour or half an hour or 15 minutes of our life that could have been dedicated to helping somebody else. So make sure that we do everything we can to get that person properly prepared so when they show up to the appointment, they're ready. Now, if we think about this whole thing holistically, then now we're in the right place. We're remembering the whole point is to get the person to the appointment, not so that we can have an appointment, but so that we can create a customer. And so everything has got to be pointing to getting them prepared to make a buying decision. That's the whole right. point of the appointment flow. Right. And, yeah. um, th this is awesome. The flow is, is great. It's all logical. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm wondering, you mentioned a, a video that you were going to uh, share with people on kind of how to set it up in that video, or maybe in this presentation somewhere, do you give any real life examples? The reason being is, although yeah. this makes logical sense, people who aren't you know, marketers by nature or, or study marketing a lot might have a kind of a hard time filling in the blanks for their business. But if they see an example or two, uh, they might be able to say, oh, okay, I see how that, wor that works now in that business. I understand how I might tweak that for my business. Yeah, let's, and let's try and get some questions from people about that as well. In the video, I'm going to talk more about the assessment. I actually go through uh, six questions that I come up with and my answers. And I talk about why I choose the questions I do and the answers. For a lot of people to get stuck on that. As far as it comes to the reminders, hopefully the few kind of vague examples I was able to give, give you some ideas of what you can do there. Um, where did you think, what were you thinking? Which part you, were you thinking about specifically, Tyler, where you might? Oh, th there wasn't any specific part. I think you did a great job explaining it. And I'm, I'm just okay. thinking, I'm trying to put myself in like the average. Yeah, uh, small that's your job, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, like the average small business owner who isn't, you know, doing marketing every day like you and I are. Yeah. Uh, you know, are, are they clear on what kind of, um, you know, lead magnet they might use? And then how do they connect that to the assessment and things like that? You know, for, for you and I, it's pretty logical step by step. I'm moving them from point A to point B and then from point B to point C, but they might be stuck in trying to come up with, you know, examples in their business and in- Sure. You know, they, and uh, let's, let's do this too. Um, I, I mentioned this, um, I think during the webinar training, but if, if you are looking at this and you go, okay, yeah, I get the general concept. It makes a lot of sense. I'm a little bit stuck. I want you to go through the how-to video. And if you're like, okay, that helped, but I've got questions still, go ahead and just tap on the chat button on, on our website and just say, hey, I need to schedule a time with Ryan. I'm not charging for these if you're a fixture funnel customer because I get paid if you're a fixture funnel customer. It's in my interest to make sure you're as successful as possible. So you stick around send text messages to people, make yourself money, and then find that to be a no-brainer, right? So our interests are aligned in that sense. If, if you will just go ahead and let me know, I'll, I'm happy to do a call. Maybe Devin can chat about if that was valuable for him and his client. Um, but I'm happy to do a call to just help you walk through a few of these things. Usually in within a few minutes, we can have some real pertinent examples and then you're good to go. And so I don't want you to, to be stuck to Tyler's point. If you're like, oh, I don't know. But if you've watched this whole training, you've gone through the how-to, now you've got a good foundation, we can quickly get to some solutions for you. Does that sound fair, Tyler? Yeah, absolutely. I would almost say it's more than fair. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've done all that, we've got people going through this flow. A lot of people might think, okay, well, that's the end. I can just set it and forget it. I'm gonna be rich, I'm gonna be on the beach you know, sipping pina coladas, virgin, of course, and then I'm going to have, you know, all my sales guys doing the, the sales appointments. That's very, very close to possible. But what you want to do, if, and the reason that we were able to take it from 2000 to 60,000 with this business that we did, and it wasn't like a business we had years of experience in or anything like that. It's just the concepts work, right? The reason we were able to do that is because we didn't just set it and forget it. In fact, if we would have just set it and forget it, it never would have got to 60,000. We had to do a few little tweaks throughout the process to get it to that point where it was consistently producing you know, over 80,000 a month. And the way that we got it to that point was we had to evaluate quality versus quantity, okay? So when you have no appointments, your first, your first wish is to get a bunch of appointments. Once you have a bunch of appointments, your biggest wish is to get good appointments, right? Have people very prepared and have you know the right person there. And so what we want to do is once we get this flow moving, we start getting some appointments coming in, we want to be evaluating those appointments. 
And so if you're not doing the appointments yourself, if somebody else on your team is actually, you know, executing those appointments, or if you're a partner and you're helping another person with their business, you've got to get feedback from them on the quality of the appointment. So the question's going to be, you know, how prepared were they to make a buying decision? Were they even capable of making the buying decision? And then what we're going to add into the mix are two things. We're going to add in filters. So filters are designed to prevent people from getting through. So let's say in a scenario that I've got a bunch of people showing up to the point that they're not financially capable of becoming a customer. Uh, maybe our price point doesn't, isn't in the realm of what they can do and their motivation is there, but they just don't have the money. Okay, so we get, it's not a motivation issue, it's actually a money issue. Well, then I may want to add a question into my assessment that would help me to evaluate if they could potentially not be financially ready for the, the invite, you know, the call to action, the, the, the purchase, the buying decision. And if that's the case, then I can either, one, cancel their appointment for them, say, hey, you know, after reviewing your assessment, I don't think that you're going to be a fit right now. Here's what I recommend you do for now. So we can point them in the, in the direction of another resource. It could be a, you know, an information product, a do-it-yourself thing or whatever. If we're concerned and we don't want to, you know, throw any good fish out with the bad fish, so to speak, then what we can do is have that answer on the assessment trigger a call or a text from our number to check in with them and see if, you know, if that, that concern is valid or if, maybe we just got a, a bad signal from them. So that's an example of a filter. That's gonna maybe add a little more complication to the process. It may stop some people from getting through, but we're gonna add that filter. Another example of a filter is maybe in that, that what to do next video that we do at the end of the assessment, we bring up the, the issue that comes up in our appointments that shouldn't be coming up at the appointment, but should be handled sooner. So a case in point of this is with, um, that company that I was, I'm using as an example, the trend I started with our sales rep, what was happening is some people were showing up and they weren't financially able to buy. And so what we did is we told them the price and in the video that was before they set the appointment, we said, hey, thanks for taking the assessment. Before you set the appointment, we just wanna make sure that it's clear that to, to take the next step with us, you're gonna be required to make an investment of $1,200. And so if that's not something you can do right now, then it's better for you to, to not go forward and not set an appointment. Um, if you set an appointment, it's because you're interested in learning more about this, this opportunity and you are prepared to spend $1,200 if it makes sense for you. Okay, so that was a filter. That actually caused some people to not progress and take the, set the appointment. And we wanted to do that because what we were seeing on our appointments is we had more people showing up that then we should that weren't prepared and we had limited slots because we only had one salesperson on it. That's another interesting side note. We went from six salespeople phone calling everybody to once we put this process in place, one salesperson outselling them 10 times to one. So very interesting when you get this process in place. The other thing you may do is you may say, okay, good, our quality is good, but we're not getting enough. Then we want to start adding accelerators. And accelerators can be taking off filters or something that would interrupt, but more preferably what we want to do is have our accelerators actually be information that would get them excited about moving forward. So it could be a case study. Um, for example, in this case, I'm telling you about this little business that went from 2000 to 60000 a month. That could be an accelerator for somebody to say, hey, I really want to pay attention. I want to do whatever it is that Ryan's talking about, because if that could work for them, then maybe that could work for me. So we're trying to up the hope, up the interest level. Um, accelerators can take different formats, too. So if you're on your lead capture, let's say you're doing a web form. You say you're doing a Facebook to a landing page or squeeze page. And then from there, we're doing a web form for them to get in. We may say, hey, you know what, I'm going to try the lead ad that can cut out all that stuff and maybe that can streamline things and become an accelerator. So we want to be thinking about filters and accelerators as we try and adjust the ratio of quality to quantity on our appointments. Hey, Ryan, yeah. uh, Alfredo's got a question here that oh, I, think, I think fits into the filters uh, idea. He's asking, you know, how would you change this up if you were charging for the appointment? Uh, obviously, that could be a filter, um, but I think he's asking more you know, logistically how you would change the flow here. Okay, well, so 
Have you ever used the paid appointments on Appointment Core? I've never actually used it, uh, but yeah, that that was my first thought. Or you could take them to an order form that then redirects to the uh, yeah. to the uh, Appointment Core link. So yeah, so if if the, those are the two options, if now the only rub that I can see, if we're going to insert an order form and we're not going to use um, what's built into Appointment Core is you've, you've got to keep that data integrity between the whole flow. Mm -hmm. So that's the only rub that I can see in this assessment. So what I would probably do in that scenario is instead of having to click straight to the assessment is then once they complete the assessment, they've answered the final question, I would then text them a link. You know, you can do a delay. You know, a lot of it depends on the, sp the specifics of the situation. I may do a delay, like let's say I want to give the impression of a human doing the evaluation, even though I'm going to have maybe decision diamonds doing it. Um, or I could actually send it to a person, they could look at it and then click a button, you know, based on the outcome that we want to have. But then send them a text to the, the form to pay for the appointment. And then that would, the thank you page of that would have the set appointment form. So there's a couple different flows on that. Um, but the, the, that's kind of nitty gritty stuff that w we can help you with if you want to do a call or something like that, if that's not enough information for you. Does that help Alfredo or do you need more? Go ahead and shut that in. That helps. Okay, good. Um, and Devin said it was the most valuable time in the last few months by far. Well, shoot, I was going for all time, but okay. We'll take last few months. Okay. Um, so to get the how-to video, if you're if you're looking at your desktop, you can pull out your your phone and scan that QR code, or you can just type in flow and send that text to 760-621-8199. And when you do that, you'll immediately get a link. I'm not going to make you go through a bunch of questions like we talked about last week. I'm just going to send you the link immediately, and uh, you can then go straight in there and, and uh, watch that video. That video is going to show you my approach to it. It's about 13, 14 minutes long, but I, I give you a little checklist that I use to go to set up this process. I talk you through how I choose my questions for my assessment. And then I show you how I build out actually that, that assessment in Fix Your Funnel. I also show you how I would throw that trackable link, you know, into a message that I then throw into Campaign Builder. And I kind of leave it at that. I don't go into details of how I build the reminders because that's kind of marketing automation one-on-one -on -one stuff is, you know, how, how do I want to do that timing? But if you have questions, again, chat into support. You can ask the questions directly there. If you'd like to have a call with me, go ahead and ask for a call and you can let them know you watched this training and I invited you to have that call and then they'll let you through the gate, so to speak. So Tyler, any questions that, that I didn't address that you want to bring up or any thoughts or final closing comments? No, nothing uh, top of mind right now. This is great. Um, I think this gives people um, a great plan to go execute on. I'm sure as people start to sit down and figure out again, the details of, okay, what's my lead magnet? What are my assessment questions? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. They'll probably run into uh, questions that they have or concerns that they have and uh, you offering support in your Facebook group or a call with you, I think is, is great. Um, that'll give people what they need to make it happen. Well, and I want folks to know too, uh, Tyler is with Box Out Marketing. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. Um, he's a great resource as well. Not that I'm trying to throw free consultation calls on Tyler because that's not his obligation, but for his clients, he, he knows all this stuff and he can fill in the blanks and kind of even out the road if, if you're in that place. So I appreciate you being on Tyler. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. This is, this is great stuff. So next week we're going to be talking about phone calls and you know, I didn't make any real promises on, on this. I did share an example that was a real world example of what we were able to do with the company. And so sometimes I think Tyler, maybe people think I'm exaggerating when I talk about significant growth in, in revenue, when you start putting some of these, uh, strategies into place but i've just seen it so frequently and we've done it with so many companies that i just take it as a given that unless you've already used some of the strategies we've talked about you bring your great company to to us will you put these some of these strategies in place the one that makes sense for your business type you just get tremendous results 
the the thing that we're going to talk about next week uh it maybe you've seen the video but we had a, a user you know you probably know brent attaway he's been around for a while yeah absolutely yeah so brent uh, recorded a nice video for me and told me that what we're going to talk about next week he didn't he didn't change his ads he didn't change his ad spend so same leads he had had before, same number of leads that he had had before, but he implemented what we're going to talk about next week and doubled the conversation that he was having in, for sales conversations. Now, his is a little longer sales process. I don't think he closes on the first call, so I'll have to follow up with them. But I would imagine if you're having 10 sales conversations and then now you're having 20 sales conversations, we probably should see your sales rate increase. What do you think? Yeah, it should double unless you're getting worse at sales. Yeah. But you know, it can happen. You know, you may need to make some adjustments because maybe you're taking stuff, some stuff for granted or whatever. I don't know. But when you're making outbound calls to warm leads, I don't, I don't think you're going to see that happen. I think you're going to see a doubling of your thing. That's, that's on the low side. When we first started using this technique I'm going to teach you about next week, we actually saw a quadrupling of our conversation rate and uh, and of uh, the sales that would go with that. So we were pretty excited about it. For some reason, we took that little neat secret. I may have put like one blog post about it and I, I tucked it away in a little box and didn't bring it out for years. And so we're doing a training on this next week. It's the first training we've done to the, to the, the fixture funnel users on this specific thing. Although I did put out a little um, cheat sheet on it, but the cheat sheet, you know, is surface level. We're going to do the training next week. We're going to do a bigger breakdown than we did this week in terms of the core problem that we're trying to address. So you really get it. And you're going to really love that if you make calls to warm leads. Um, it, it could change your life. So I'm really excited about that one. I'm really excited to hear what Tyler has to think about it. Yeah, I'm trying to guess what it might be. Um, I, I think I know what you're talking about, but I'll keep it to myself so we don't. Okay, thanks for that spoiler. 